Hey everyone, my name is Nate and in this video I'll be giving you a quick demo of our open source Image Cache Letter Projects API. This API provides a few operations for Image Cache Letter files. You can see them all on the left side of the screen here. And that includes format conversion between JSON and plain text, validation, updating file headers, and adding cache letters to a file. It supports a few versions of the X9 specification. We have a chart here that shows all of the different X9 records. And it includes X937, which is the original version, and then some of the more recent updates to that spec called X9100-187. If you aren't familiar with image cache letters, they're basically a way to efficiently transport check payments electronically using a standard format. And if you want to dive more into the X9 format and its applications, feel free to check out some of our additional documentation, like all of the documentation on the rest of this page. And then also we have a couple intro sections here. So let's switch over to a terminal. And the first thing that I'm going to do is clone the project locally. And then just go ahead and CD into that directory. So I definitely should mention that the image cache letter API only supports ASCII encoded files by default. However, we can manually pass reader and writer options in the code to support EBCDIC encoded files instead. And these types of files are also very common. So to do this, head over to the project and go to files.go. This is located under CMD and then server. On line 115, we have to add the reading option. So let's go over to that line and then just type in image cache letter dot read EBCDIC encoding option. And then we also want to add the writer option, so that's going to be on line 265. Image cache letter and then write EBCDIC encoding option parentheses and a comma. So if we were to build the Docker image with these settings, it will only accept EBCDIC encoded files and no longer ASCII files. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the default, so I'm going to just remove everything I've added here for these options, go back to its original state, and then I'm just going to go ahead and get started with uh, Docker. So I'm assuming that you have Docker set up on your system, and if you don't, make sure to get that set up first before proceeding. But the first thing that I'm going to do is use Docker build, and then the T flag lets us specify a tag. I'm going to call it ICL, and then a period represents our current directory. So this process takes a little while. I'm going to speed it up and get back to you once it's done. Next, we can run the image with Docker run. Set the first port to 8083 and the second port to 9093. And then just put our ICL tag and that's going to run our API. It looks like it's running successfully on port 8083, so let's try pinging it next. And to do that, just do curl localhost port number and ping. Since it gives us pong, we know that it's good to go. And one more thing I'm going to do is go back to Chrome open up a new tab and head over to localhost 8083 files and that's going to give us null and what this is showing is all of the files that have been stored on the service so since we just started we do expect this to be null. Now that everything's set up I'm going to first create a file using the create endpoint. We have a few sample files under our project's test data folder so I'm just going to use one of those and let's upload a plain text x9 file using curl X post followed by data binary and then our file path which is going to be test test data and the file name is valid ascii.x937 now we just got to put in localhost port number and then files slash create enter that in and if we switch over to chrome refresh our files list we can see that the plain text file is now uploaded as JSON. This is pretty messy, so I'm just going to copy and paste this into a formatter so we can see it better. And on this right hand side, you can see that we have our file header, cache letters, bundles, and a lot of this data here is actually our image data. Now you might have noticed that this file has a unique file ID at the top, 
and we can actually use this to fetch the file in whatever format we want. So let's try it first as JSON. All we have to do is type in curl localhost port number files and then copy in this ID. So let's uh, copy and paste it. Now I'm just going to output these contents to the terminal for this demo, but of course you can also save it as a file onto your system. So there we go. It's the same exact uh, JSON output that we saw before. And similarly, we can fetch this file as plain text using the exact same command, but at the end, we want to put slash contents. And it's actually going to give me an error saying I got to put this output flag to display it. So we'll just do that real quick. Okay. So you can't really read this at all, but it's the original format of the file. Now let's clear the terminal. And one more cool function that we can do is validation. To do that, all we have to do is replace contents in the previous command with validation, or validate actually. And then that's going to say that we have no errors. And as a result, we know that our file is completely valid. The API also allows you to update the file header of a created file by supplying its ID and some new data. Let's try updating the immediate destination name of this file that's up right now to be YouTube. I have a JSON header example, so we can delete everything except the immediate destination name field, and then get rid of this comma, change the value to be YouTube, and then I'm going to speed this up real fast. The last thing that we have to insert is the file ID. And now it's good to go, so we can enter that in. Switch back to Chrome, and if we refresh, you're going to notice that at the top, we now have this field set to be YouTube. The last thing that I'm going to cover is how to add a new cache letter to a file. This is pretty similar to this last example where we just updated the header, and I've got a cache letter in JSON format, and it's ready to go. But one thing that we can do is add an ID. And let's set this to move123 so that we can easily spot this new cache letter. And the command's going to be pretty similar. Just got to change the file. And also add slash cache letters to the end. If we refresh and search for move123, as you can see, we now have this cache letter added right after our original one. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Please leave any questions you might have down below in the comments and we'll get back to you pretty quickly. And if you want an even faster response, you should also join our Slack. So that's gonna be in the description below. Thanks for checking out this tutorial and stay tuned for more demos of our open source APIs.